How angry have you been at anyone when they just keep getting on your nerves? This story is definitely not for the weak-hearted ones out there. Today we will be talking about the young lady who had her hand chopped off while she was alive and was left that way to die, or rather bleed to death. Well, in the case in hand, the cause for committing the murder was merely the fact that Nicole just won't stop speaking. The murderer kept asking the victim, Nicole Perry, to stay calm and be still for a while, but Nicole just did not listen. The murder of Nicole Perry, one of the most terrifying, spine-chilling, and gruesome acts ever to have been committed by any individual. We will be covering the case in detail today. Let's get started. The story starts with the trash boy. Oscar Flores reported to his work and was asked to pick up trash from the south side of WW White Road. The area was a known dump site, so it was not new for Oscar to head that way and clean up. Now he and his co-worker headed down to the site and found many bags at the venue. This was all routine for them. While many were easy to pick up, there were two bags that were not easy to lift. One of them even ripped open. Oscar was startled when he noticed hair coming out of one of the bags. Well, he was quite familiar with finding pet hair in the trash bags, but this time it just stood out. It looked quite humane. That was not it. His doubt was further strengthened when he noticed a silver necklace sticking out of the pile. That is when the authorities were informed of it. The police arrived at the scene and discovered the reality. The first two bags they found had pieces of cloth that were soaked in blood, napkins, cat litter, and a pair of shoes. For a bit more relevant detail, there was Nikki written on the side of the shoe. They then moved onto the heavier bags. There were two blue bins in it, within which the body of Nicole Perry was found. The 31-year-old woman was called by the nickname Nikki, so that explained who the owner of the shoe was. This started the investigation, which lasted for a month until Rafael Castillo was arrested. Reasons? Wait for it. Soon after his arrest, an affidavit was released which contained all of the details. If you hate gruesome content, this is where you should beware. So Nikki, the victim here, was brutally murdered after an attack inside a known drug house. The house was in the 300 block of West Harlan Avenue, towards the south side of the city. According to reports from victims, the police found that Raphael had cut off Nikki's hand using a machete. He did not stop there and he went on to strike her head with an axe. Reports are that right after the murder, he made her boyfriend and another woman clean up the whole mess. This is all the information the public has ever had for two whole years. In the two years since it happened, the police and the public have made a heartbreaking discovery. Rafael Castillo was undergoing his trial for the murder he had committed. This is when the prosecution made a statement about the intention behind the gruesome murder. According to the statement, Rafael cut Nikki's hands and hit her with an axe because he was not shown enough respect by her. The statement was made by prosecutor Jennifer McDaniel. This trial lasted for a week and was one of the most searched trials back then. The reason for that was the kind of gruesome acts revealed during the trial. Not only that, but there were videos and images that were shown. The kind of strength required to even look at those images should be immense. The manner of Nicole's death was a fate one would never imagine going through. And the cause? Well, she didn't stop talking. Oh, wait till we get to the best part. The lack of respect and not shutting up were just the beginning of everything. This story has a long way to go. The question that majorly existed in everyone's mind was, why isn't there a death penalty for this? The reason for that is even more astounding. The reason for not having a death penalty trial for Castillo was because there was no other crime committed in the act. According to the law, capital punishment comes in for offenses like aggravated robbery, more than one death, or anything that includes more than just one crime. So, though the crime was horrific, the law states that capital punishment can only be given in such cases, not where there is just one punishment involved in the act. Anyway, let us move on from the law and have a look at the facts. If you are not chilled to your spine already, be ready for this one. Castillo was out on a bond the whole time the trial was going on. He had to pay $50,000 as a bond, but the important part here is that he was left out in the open after he had committed all of it. All right, let's take a step back. He was under house arrest and was not even allowed to go to church on Sunday, so yes, the authorities did think before they put him in. On the flip side, when he was under house arrest, Castillo behaved well and followed all of the rules that he was to follow. When the case was going on, the prosecutor made it clear that Nikki was a drug user and was a regular user as well. 
She was living with her boyfriend in the house where it all happened. As a matter of fact, they moved into this home recently after they were evicted from their previous residence. So, through one of their common friends, this house where it all happened was arranged for them. For details, you need to know that this house had like a small garage transformed into a living space or something like that. So, there used to be a person who used to live there with his girlfriend. Raphael was his cousin. That's how it was all connected. Now that you have the context and the kind of setup they had, let us get deeper into the crime. This small, self-made living space in the garage was an utter mess. There was trash all along, and things were all thrown out without any order. To make it even more weird, there was a motorcycle inside the room. Given that Nikki's boyfriend Randall was asked to clean up the mess along with another woman, chances are that the crime happened in his presence, right? Well, it turns out that Randall was one of the witnesses to this and he had a pretty interesting story to tell. Randall spoke under the oath that Nikki was known for being a bit mouthy, and when told to stop talking, she would often raise her voice. Randall also mentioned that she had recently lost her dad and was in a bad state at the time. Randall stated that she was not being violent, but she was rude when she was speaking to Castillo. Despite Randall trying to stop her, she kept on going. This is when Castillo lost it. He went on to tape her hand and then brought in a machete. Randall was shocked and frozen. He heard the machete hit, and he describes it as a sound he will never forget. She fell onto the floor from the couch and was trying to look around. He then grabbed the axe, swung it, and buried it in her skull. Randall ends his statement by saying that Castillo then carried on as if it never happened. Now chances are that they were under influence at that time, because of which none of them were in their best state of mind. Maybe that is also why Randall did not make an attempt to save Nikki. But certain things have no answers, do they? There were two other witnesses to the whole scene. One of them was Vanessa Vargas. Now Vanessa walked in when Nikki was on the couch with her hands taped up. She said that she was scared at that point because he threatened her and her son's lives. It was Vanessa who later joined Randall to clean up the room after the whole incident. Randall remembers closing her eyes and saying his final goodbye, among all other things, that night. The kind of mental agony that night upon him would be impossible for anyone to understand, we believe. After everything was cleaned, Randall realized that they had forgotten to dispose of Nikki's severed hands with the body in the blue bin. Vanessa's boyfriend, Gizmo, calls his friend for help since he has a car. His friend, one named Steven, who was also detained and was in jail, stated that his friend called, so he went. He was not aware of what was inside the trash. When he went back home after disposing of it, he was asked to throw the crockpot that had the hand inside it. He fled from the scene immediately and left for his sister's place. So that was the story of Nicole Perry. We have heard of many murders on the internet, but the level to which this one went was gruesome. Nikki's boyfriend was the one who had to remove the axe from Nikki's head after she was murdered. Imagine that for fate. We will be back with more spine-chilling crimes. Stay tuned.